Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our third preparatory ground instruction on instrument flying. We're going to talk about partial panel instrument flying. So this occurs when we have an instrument failure. Uh, typically, the way it's practiced is a gyro failure. We've, we've lost our vacuum pump and lost the attitude indicator and heading indicator. Can also have a pedostatic failure. So let's say a pedo failure. Uh, you, you've you lost your airspeed indicator, which is pretty easy uh, to deal with. All you do is just have the pitch attitudes as normal and set your power uh, as normal. And uh, and most students end up getting really worried. I had a pedo failure one time, and, and I, rem I was a new private pilot or something like that, and, and I was worried I was going to stall the airplane and, you know, came in, like, really fast because I was worried. You don't need to worry about stalling the airplane. You like you have enough experience at this point that you know when that airplane's going to stall. And and so just fly it the way you remember how to fly it. And uh, most likely everything's going to just work out. You can also have a static failure where you lose your uh, altimeter, MVSI, and your airspeed is uh, incorrect. And if that happens, you can use your alternate static source. The more worrying problem though, is if you have a vacuum failure, your vacuum pump has failed. And so you've lost your attitude indicator and heading indicator. Uh, in most small airplanes uh, or kind of the older Cessnas, uh, the attitude indicator and heading indicator are driven by the vacuum pump and the turn coordinator is driven electrically. So that if you have a failure of your vacuum pump, you still have something. And so that's what we're gonna talk about. Um, if you do have a vacuum failure, so you've lost your attitude indicator and heading indicator, the most important thing is that you recognize this early on because it's not it's not going to just like fail and it's going to be obvious. It's just going to be off, let's just say. And then when you're looking at your uh, your vacuum gauge, you know it might read zero or it might be read low. And so if you're in straight and level flight and you lose these instruments, what you're going to do is you're going to reference your turn coordinator to keep your wings level and your altimeter uh, for your pitch attitude. So before we talked about a selective radial scan, so it's kind of the same thing, except the altimeter and turn coordinator will take the place of the attitude indicator. So you're just kind of going back and forth between those two. And then every so often looking at your uh, airspeed indicator. If you have to do a turn, uh, what we do, these are kind of interesting. Uh, because remember when we turn our magnetic compass is inaccurate. So you have to turn to a certain heading, for example. So what we do is we always do a rate one turn or called a two minute turn. So that is when the wings on this uh, turn coordinator are right here. That's a rate one turn or two minute turn. That means it takes two minutes to do 360 degrees. Or uh, if we divide it out, it's 10 seconds to do 30 degrees of turn. So just figure out how many degrees you have to turn. Let's say you have to turn 30 degrees. So you're going to roll into your rate one turn, start the time, and then 10 seconds later, you're going to roll out and stop the time. Okay. So you're get, going to get some practice during your training uh, doing that, and then you can always just kind of adjust it. Uh, but that will give you a pretty good um, idea. And by the time you get good at this, it's amazing how accurate you can actually make these turns. Uh, you won't be more than, let's say, five degrees off um, when asked to turn, let's say, 180 degrees. Uh, if we do our climbs and descents, uh, remember, we can use our uh, alternate static source if we need to, if we, if we have um, something uh, failed. And... Uh, and then what we're going to do is look at the airspeed indicator uh, to figure out our pitch attitude and our turn coordinator to keep our wings level. And then every so often we're going to look at our altimeter. On your flight test, this is for commercial pilot only. So you're gonna maintain straight and level flight and then execute a, uh, a coordinated turn to a heading specified by the examiner. So those are the flight test standards. So that concludes uh, this lesson. It's pretty short, uh, but it's going to be quite a bit of practice when you're actually flying it. So thanks for joining me. We'll see you in our next lesson.